Thank you. I don't believe there can be work-life balance. Balance is a myth. <laughs> I experienced this firsthand. When my oldest son, Jack, was eight years old, he said those dreaded words to me. Mom, why don't you come to anything at school? He was right. I was not a chaperone on the field trip, and I was not a volunteer in the classroom. So I asked Jack, what would you like me to come to? And he said, lunch. I thought, I know how to schedule lunch. <laughs> I put one hour on my calendar with additional time to drive back and forth from downtown Denver to his school. So the day arrived. I drove like crazy to his school, rushed in, got there just in time for the lunch line. Jack waved me over to where he was standing, and he pointed out the food that I should avoid and the food that I should take. So we filled our trays, and we went to his assigned table. I sat down in a little tiny chair where my knees were now hitting my chin. I picked up my plastic fork, kind of moved around the chicken nuggets, and I noticed that all the kids at the table had their arms raised and were wiggling their fingers trying to get the attention of the teacher, including my son. I glanced at Jack's tray, and it was completely empty. The teacher started dismissing all the kids, and Jack said, thanks, Mom, see you later. <laughs> and I said, wait, 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 where are you going? And he said, recess. <laughs> exactly seven minutes had gone by. <laughs> so I faked a smile and waved, and off he went. And then I sat in my chair, in this little tiny chair, and the tears began to roll down my eyes, really big tears. And I sat there for a minute, and then I gathered myself up, got into my car, drove back downtown, cried the entire way during my drive, went, went into my office, and experienced, for the rest of the afternoon, every emotion you can imagine. Frustration, disappointment, anger, and guilt wasn't a very good day. And then something interesting happened when I went home that evening. I walked in the house, and Jack ran over to me and gave me a big hug and said, thanks for coming to lunch. He seemed very happy. <laughs> he was totally satisfied with the seven minutes. And I realized that I had created the unexpected expectations. I had created the anxiety. I was the one that created this environment. How is it that my eight-year-old son could live in the moment and I couldn't? That was the day that I shattered the balance myth. More and more, we're expected to do everything that's out there. Our customers demand that we immediately respond to an email. Our companies insist that we're available at any moment for a meeting if they call. Oh, and don't forget, on top of that, try to be a perfect mother, wife, daughter, and friend. And somehow we're supposed to keep all this balanced? I never believed the hype that women could not have a successful career and a successful home life. I refused to believe that I had to choose between being a mother and having a career. I wanted both. I worked really hard for both. I deserved both. We all deserved both. My instincts told me there had to be a different way. I did not want to choose between the two. My answer was to shatter the balance myth by integrating, not balancing. I want to share with you three strategies of how to integrate in your life. The first is don't take the mother, artist, or athlete out of the career woman. We can't be two people. You can't be one person in one place and then go home and be something completely different. We need to be authentic at home and the office. If your job is something that you really don't like, and it really is just a job, it's going to pull on your personal life, and you're going to feel like you're always out of balance. If the place you work is something that you're passionate about, then it won't feel like that. It'll feel like you are being true to yourself, and you are one person and in integrating. 
Integrating instead of balancing allows us to take the best person we are at home to the office and the best person we are at the office to the home. There is nothing to balance, we just live. Next, combine your personal and work calendars. For me, I had two calendars, one for my home life and one for my personal life, because I thought I should keep those two worlds separate. Well, as my job responsibilities grew and my family grew, this caused a lot of conflict. So I decided to literally put everything on one calendar. Now, as you can imagine, this put a shiny light on the fact that I had three items scheduled for one hour block, or that my family had four events on a Wednesday night in four different locations. So once I got over the shock of looking at my one calendar, it gave me the opportunity to look at the bigger picture and to make conscious choices. Now, if I had two items that were conflicting, which is most of the time, I could choose one, and I didn't have to think about the other. I decided to be present on that one and to give it all I had. If I chose to be at a party for my girlfriend, rather than at a large dinner with a large customer, I didn't say to myself, I should have, I could have, Maybe I should have chosen something different. Once I made that choice, I decided to stay there, to be present, and to give it all I had. Now, I'm not saying that's always easy, or that I was always perfect at that, but I did attack the day with this in mind. One life, one calendar. Third, now that you have that one calendar, you're gonna to have to make time on that calendar. How many of us have said, boy, if I just had someone to help me with the laundry and help me do the cooking and for someone to clean, I'm sure I could figure this out. Or how about this one? I just need to learn to sleep less. <laughs> well, we're not going to get more help and we're not going to get more time. No one's figured out how to make 24 hours longer and no one's figured out how to successfully sleep with only two hours but we do have opportunity to make room on our calendar for the things that we want to do, for things that give us energy, and for things that help us get through the day. I'm a list maker. I'm sure most of you are too. My process is to have lots of things in my head, to categorize them, and then to make a number of short lists instead of one long list. The reason I like short lists is you can cross things off rather quickly and you can throw it away. I also really like hitting the delete button on my computer. It feels really good to do that. But a list is only as good as the things that we can get done on it. So how do we get all those things done? How do we prioritize that list? Well, first begin by setting a time limit and then follow it. So what I do is I have my list and I actually set a time and then I stop and walk away. So as an example, if I'm at the office working on a presentation, and I know I have exactly one hour to do it, I do the best that I can in that one hour. And when that one hour is over, I don't keep working to try to perfect it, or I don't negotiate more time with myself, I stop and walk away, which is really hard to do, but it's good to teach yourself just to stop and walk away from the whole thing. The same applies at home. If I allot one hour to wrap Christmas presents, and 45 minutes into it, I realize I am not gonna get this done. I either move to those terrific decorative bags or I stop and schedule time a completely different day. The point is, I stop and walk away. This also allows you to take a look at your calendar for the last month and ask yourself, did I really do the things that I wanted to do? Did I spend the time where I wanted to? Did I spend the time on the things that give me energy and the things that I want to accomplish? The world we live in is not going to change, but how we respond to it can. If you have seven minutes, are you going to choose to agonize over balance, or are you going to choose to live and be present? Our lives are not an equation that needs to be balanced. Our lives are a series of interactions, lessons learned, and just plain living. I'm not saying that I have the secret formula or a magic checklist, but I do know that the answers are within us. And the most important thing that's within us is to not let others set expectations for you, 
to set your own and to set them the way that you want. You have the power to do that, and you can set your own expectations. My wish for you is that when you have seven minutes, just like I had with my son, you will not search for balance. You will choose to be present, and you will choose to live. Thank you.